What's up guys, welcome back to another video on Pure Panorama and I am just gonna say right from the start, hit that like button man for the last two weeks having a daily upload from me. What? Come on, I never thought I would be able to accomplish that and uh, we did that. So uh, hit that like button right now if you uh, if you would please, thank you. I greatly appreciate that and every one of you. I just got done picking up some products for the 24 valve Cummins and as soon as we get home we are gonna start getting the frame worked on a little bit. We're gonna start cleaning it up and we got some undercoating so we're looking to clean the frame up a little bit and start to undercoat it and just get it looking better. After I was down underneath there uh, last night looking at the leaf springs and stuff I decided okay now's the time. So we don't have to obviously get it all done in one shot. We can take our time sanding it and using the wire brushes and stuff with the drill and all that crap. Try and get all that little orange dusty coloring off of the frame rails and in every little nooks all the nooks and crannies and then go ahead and tape things off so that we can spray under there and just get it all cleaned up and looking fresh when we get back to the house I will show you which undercoating products I use for the underside of my trucks we also have a package from diesel auto power that should be at the house when I get home so we will get into that and see what that is all about and I also want to give a thanks to Diesel Syndicate for reminding me of something that I would have completely overlooked and not checked but he just reminded me to check the tailgate on the truck for my little clunking noise issue in the rear end of the Cummins so we are gonna check that check the bushings all that stuff because that that my friend is a good idea and I definitely would not have thought to do that so I appreciate that and Chad Myers 73 he uh, told me to check the fuel banjo bolt on the back side of the engine for the fuel return um, where the excess fuel from the injectors returns back to your fuel tank so I need to track that down and check that this weekend and see what condition that thing is in as well so thank you to you two guys and that is what I love about the channel here and having all you guys there uh, just a big team a big family to help one another and help me because I'm still learning man this is I don't know it all and I uh, I just love learning new things every day learning from you guys helping to teach you what I do know if you don't know something and, and just stuff like that so this is uh, this has just been a really great experience so far and I hope to have many more good times to come here on Pier Panorama I should be back to the house within 15 minutes though so I will see you when I get there Right, now that we are home, I'm gonna run into the garage, get out the little wire wheels for the drill, grab the drill out of the toolbox of the truck, and I think I'm gonna start up front because things are gonna be probably a little harder to do and get to, whereas I can get around under the rear of the truck a little bit easier. So I think we'll start up front and we're just gonna start wire wheeling with the drill, starting to get all that little surface rust crap off the frame and starting to prep it to spray with undercoating. Not gonna be actually spraying it now for a little bit just gonna go through the preparation and getting things cleaned up so that we can get it all hosed down wash down let it dry up and stuff and get to spraying it with undercoating soon enough <laughs>
covered in rust and dirt and all the, all that crap that was down there. I probably would have been better off if I would have sprayed the underside of the truck first and just rinsed it off at least, but nope, not me. I figure I'm gonna have to wash it anyway, so I might as well just go down there, dirt, rust, all, all of it, just, just taking it out, getting rid of it. But I did start up here just behind the driver's side front wheel and have worked my way down this driver's side to the rear wheel. Uh, still have to do the rear um, past the rear wheel, but it's really not too bad in the back of the truck uh, There definitely was some areas up here towards the front of the truck that they've gotten worse So I'm glad that I am taking care of it now and Getting into some of the underside of the cab. I noticed a couple spots that whew, But it, it is what it is. I'm gonna clean that stuff down and it's still all sturdy, but like I said, this is a northern truck and all things considered at the end of the day for a truck that spent 17 years of its life, its whole life up here in the north and didn't come from down south or anything, this thing is pretty darn decent for a truck like that. But if I were to hold on to this 24 valve Cummins for years to come down the line, I definitely would have to pull the cab off of it and take care of some stuff underneath there if I wanted it to be in excellent condition. Uh, but right now we're, uh, we're riding it out in good condition and I don't know honestly how much longer I will actually have this 24 valve Cummins in my life. But while we do have it, we are going to do everything obviously that we can and try to keep it cleaned up so that when we go to sell it, it has as much value kept in it as possible. But for the one or two areas that have kind of, I don't want to say gotten out of control, but have rusted the most on this truck. I, I really don't think that it's going to hinder anyone's decision in buying this when I go to sell it. Plus, it's going to be basically all rebuilt as far as the front end goes and stuff like that. So I don't think I'd have any issues selling it as is um, with those couple spots that are rusted down beneath. And it's, they're very, they're just too tiny little areas that are rusted more than I would like. So I'm making a big deal out of it. A lot of other guys aren't gonna make a big deal out of it when they look at the overall general condition of the truck. I don't even know why I'm talking about selling it right now because it's not like I'm selling it tomorrow or listing it for sale. Or am I? Because I have been thinking about it. But we'll find out, <laughs> we'll find out I guess, uh, here in the future with a video if I do decide to sell the 2001 24 valve Cummins and look to maybe get into something different. But for now, we are gonna keep on doing what we're doing. We're gonna throw the parts that we have on there and keep repairing things that need to be repaired. Gonna continue on with this, cleaning it up and getting the frame all washed down once we continue to get rust knocked off of it. And then we will be able to go ahead and spray everything underneath there with our undercoating. And speaking of undercoating, let me show you what I use for that product. You probably guessed it. The same thing that many, many people use. This Rust-Oleum uh, undercoating, if you get the one that says professional grade on it, I don't know about the other one. I haven't honestly really used it. I've only used this one, uh, but I love this because in all honesty, after you spray this on the frame, uh, it really just looks like factory paint on the frame and it doesn't look like it was sprayed and gobbed up with a bunch of crap. It doesn't even look like really anything was done to it at all. It just looks like a good truck, that a good frame that was taken care of and well maintained. So this stuff right here, it's the tits. And I, uh, if you haven't used this or you're looking to clean up the underside of your truck, your axles, whatever it is, I recommend this stuff because this stuff is my favorite by far. I do have five cans of that though. We are just gonna set it to the side. We will pick up another five cans here uh, soon as we start to get closer to being able to spray the frame and the underside of the cab and bed. I'm gonna spray everything that I can get to and clean up everything that I can get to just to make sure that it's coated, it's fresh and protected so that we um, hopefully don't allow certain areas to continue to keep rusting. And the two little areas that I was talking about previously that have rusted out more than I would like to see, I'm going to try and take care of those and see if I can't do something to, I guess, stop them from continuing to rust. Now, they're both underneath the cab, so it's not like you can see them from looking around the outside of the truck. You have to get down there and check it out. So if I can just take care of it to the point where I get the rust and crap out of 
there and then do any type of body work, that might be a good spot for me to learn body work, to be honest, because you won't be able to see my imperfections and my flaws from myself learning how to do body work. So those might be a couple good areas for me to try and practice body work and bondo and stuff like that if I can get them all cleaned up and go down that road. So I may look into that and think about that some more just to help prevent them from rusting anymore during the next winter. And then the body work that's out here on the outside of the truck that you can see, well, I'm just gonna still continue to try and find a new set of doors for the truck to take care of those. And then the rocker panels may be something that I would entertain getting into uh, trying to repair myself. But honestly, it'd probably just be quicker and easier. Possibly Possibly cheaper for me to just let a body shop replace the rocker panels but now let's take a look at my tailgate before we wrap this video up I am going to cease the cleaning of the frame for the night but I want to show you that I actually think that diesel syndicate was right on the money and my tailgate is possibly the culprit for the clunks that I'm hearing in the back end of my truck so dude uh, yeah, good job so if we listen closely and I shake the tailgate just Listen to this. She's definitely loose, and I'm sure that when I hit a bump, uh, this thing probably bounces and jiggles pretty dang hard, and is probably what I'm hearing because it doesn't do it all the time, but it will do it, uh, you know, if I hit a bump just right, like I mentioned in the other video. So I think that's the culprit. That's definitely it, man. I said I was hearing it on the driver's side and it is right over here, the pivot point where the hinge is down here in the left corner. That's it, bouncing up and down. So we will get some parts to take care of that and see if the clunk in the rear end goes away. And honestly, I'm kind of relieved that I don't have to putz around with the leaf springs and take care of the bushings or anything in there. So we're gonna take care of the tailgate, see if the clunk disappears, which I honestly think that it is probably going to now so i was totally wrong about the leaf springs and diesel syndicate in to save the day good job my man i was totally wrong about the leaf springs though or the bushings in the leaf springs um probably still actually wouldn't hurt to take care of those but we're gonna put that on hold for the time being and go and see what we can do with that tailgate and probably not worry about that clunk anymore because we're not going to hear it after I take care of that. I have a pretty darn good feeling. That is going to do it for this video though. If you could leave a like on it on your way out, I would greatly appreciate that. It does help in channel growth and recommending videos to new people. If you're stopping into the channel for the first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't even hesitate. Just hit it and join the family here on Pure Panorama and I will see you in the next video. I'll show you the package from Diesel Auto Power in the next video also because we'll be getting into doing something that will involve that package so I'll see you then peace I just wanna keep